Hey guys, oh, here's our next upcoming project here. Oh, kind of what's been going on. I got the 4020, I called Jim and I just told him, I said, listen, I said, I don't know, it's up to you. I said, I got the park lock fixed. She moves, she steers, hydraulics work, the remotes work. Um, hi, hi crazy. Anyway, um, I said that, you know, that PTO, it, it disengages, I said, but it's just, it's just uh, the PTO break. And I said, you know, and Jim says, well, what's it take to fix that? And I said, it's a double split. I said, it has to be split between the engine and transmission. Then it has to be split between the clutch housing and the rear end. And then, and then you can, not that, not the clutch, the clutch housing and the transmission. So anyways, um, he said, nah, hell, as long as it disengages and it shuts off, that's what I, he said, that's what I was worried about. I said, no, he said, no, no, go ahead and finish her up. So anyway, so, uh, after we got that wrap back up this morning, Dave come in with that really nice 389 Peterbilt hay truck that I did the outer frame rebuild on the Cummins here a while back. That's been maybe a year. He's already got 300, over 300,000 on that truck. That's how hard that guy runs. Anyway, he's been having a really bad vibration problem in that truck, and he's had it a little bit more to the story on that. He ran off the road. <laughs> he's got over 4 million miles now on his belt driving truck. And, oh, I don't know, maybe six months after I rebuilt the engine, he ran off the road in the canyon. What we call the canyons up on I-5 between Redding and and uh, Butte Valley. Well, it's at, between Redding and Weed. When he ran off the road, he reached down to grab a a bag of beef jerky and ran off the road with a fully load fully loaded hay truck. And uh, he says, I was airborne for a little bit. He said he lost a whole load of hay. He said the trailer passed him. It screwed the truck up fairly good. You know, I had to get a new hood. Um, he had ran it for a while and come back up here one day and said, you know, that airbag didn't, what's wrong with that airbag? Why is it setting all funny? And I got underneath there. I said, your whole, your whole drive axle slid over. I said, I, I guarantee you the center pins where the spring hangers are and everything are broke too. So anyways, he had taken it to an alignment shop and they had dicked around with it and got the axles back where they're supposed to be. And, you know, that all happened when he wrecked it. But anyway, he's taking it into these drive line or not drive line shops, but he's taking it into these alignment shops and these other shops down south because he's always down there hauling hay, and you know, and he's complaining about this vibration problem. And you know, I don't know. He kept complaining about it, and they weren't getting it fixed, and they were changing stuff and fixing and throwing parts at it anyway. I said just. He had a, as you can see from the oil on the ground, he had a front wheel seal leaking. And I said, can I look at your, just look at, climb underneath the truck there and kind of look things over? Well, anyway, I got under there and I'm not shitting you guys. Both drive lines, the front drive line has the carrier, right? And then the back drive line between the, between the rear ends. And both of them, see how this drive line's timed here? Yoke to yoke. Both of them drive lines were out of time. Between, well see the back one, the back one, somebody had had the carrier bearing off and got the yoke on the back side of the carrier out of time. It was way out. So I pulled that out and retimed it and got it in line. And then the drive line between the rear ends, between the slip yoke and here, I mean it was halfway out of time. I mean way off, not just a little bit way off. It was very noticeable. And I just told him, I said, all these freaking shops you took this thing to and nobody could look and see that the drive lines were out of time? Yeah, but you know, yeah, I guess come up here to the shithole old place where the dumb old farm mechanic's at and he can put the drive lines in time. Anyway, um, we drove it up and down the road there and it was just smooth as glass. He goes, I just, I can't believe this shit, Warren. I said, well, I can. <laughs> anyway, so... We got him done, got him out of here. I gotta run the overhead on it next week. But here's what we got going. This old Roadrunner hay squeeze. 
right here has got an old 290 Cummins in it with a 13-speed transmission. And I think somebody kind of kind of fibbed to him a little bit and they told him this was a C10 cap motor. So what I'm doing is I'm taking that old 290 Cummins out. It's worn out and if you buy a new one of these Roadrunner hay squeezes set up you know with a new one you're looking at $240,000. So he said I'd rather just stick a, a newer updated engine in it with an Allison. There he goes right there. He's going to go get loaded now. But um if you take a you know take this engine and Allison transmission with the keypad and everything and put in it uh, it'll be a pretty good machine, but the problem is Somebody told him he had a C10 and I walked right up to it and looked at it and I said that's not a C10 Oh, it's not I said no, that's a 3126. I said see the Huey pump on it. That's not a C10 I don't know who the hell told you you had a C10 <clears throat> but <laughs> He said well, wasn't it a 10 liter? I said no, it's a 7.2 liter. It's a it's the same thing as a C7 a 3126, 3126B, I said a, 30, a straight 3126 was a mechanical. I said, but it, that's a 3126B, it's a Hueyed motor. I said, but I mean, it, it's still okay, but it's not what they're telling you it is. Anyway, he said, well, we'll just keep moving forward. So what we gotta do on this thing, guys, is I've, I've actually fixed quite a few of these. What happens is the California Air Resource Board this was one of those car deals and they make you destroy the block well if your guy knows what he's doing and knocks a hole in the block in the right place um it's easily fixable so we'll take nickel rod and we'll weld this thing back up right here at least he cut a hole in it right in the water port so that's okay that's an easy fix we'll weld that back up he said the broken piece was the piece they cut out was somewhere what did he say in the intake i thought he said it was in the intake but is it in here somewhere or... yeah it's down in the hole i see it right down in there there it is there it is see we'll weld that right back in there weld it up really good hey get your ass over here It'll probably sit in there just like that. Yep. Yep. Just come out of a bus, obviously. So, I guess I'm going to get my big forklift and get this thing in the door. And, uh, God, can I drag it or is it on the transmission? Yeah, it's all sitting on that transmission. So, I got to get a hold of it with some chains, pick it up. And I almost need to come in lengthwise because it's. If I come in this way, it's pretty wide. I don't think it, uh, it'll fit through that door. Yeah, it's not that wide. Well, let me get things situated here, guys. We gotta get this thing in the door. We gotta start getting this one out of there. And then get this one out of the frame. And uh, I got another thing I need to start doing here. I'm trying to get Stacy Young's Ivico. I gotta get that thing, start going back together. Uh, he's probably pissed that it's just I, I can't do enough and uh, the 4050 the piston's supposed to be in tomorrow but it's probably going to be Friday before I can even get back on it because by the time it shows up at noon or one or whenever UPS shows up I'm going to already be down here and it's going to my house so anyways I guess I'll get after it and we'll see if we can start going on this project and move forward.